Hello and welcome to another video from the only channel you need not only survive the current apocalypse but actually enjoy it. And uh, this is not going to be one of them finely tuned, highly polished uh, videos that you're used to seeing me make because I don't have time for that. I'm getting ready to go uh, get busy with something. I won't be around for about 10 days. But I can't leave without making a video response to about a gazillion people that demand an answer from me. I've made a few uh, comments and replies and some videos about uh, evolution and creation and about the Bible. And this always stirs people up. But the same thing seems to be coming up from both sides of the battle. Uh, I've been hearing, you know, the earth is 350 billion years, six months and 12 days and three hours old. And if you don't believe that, you're an idiot. On the other end of the spectrum, we've got you are the spawn of Satan and will burn in torment for all eternity because you do not recognize that the earth was created in six 24-hour days. So I'm getting it from both ends and I don't know why. I don't, I don't know what I said that made people think that I know how old the earth is or that I care how old the earth is because it's not just a sin to go looking for that answer. It's the sin just to even desire that. You know, we're not put here on the earth to figure out how old it is. Here's the deal. I am constantly being accused of not believing in science. That's not true. I am a practicer of science. You could say science is my religion because science by definition means search for the truth. So yes, I am a scientist. That's what I, that's what my faith is in. And uh, the proof is in the pudding. Look where I'm at. I'm out here in the woods where a person can find the truth. Now the people that are accusing me are sitting in some kind of sterile laboratory supposedly trying to find the truth. Let's look at what science as practice is compared to my science. Science as practice seems to require gadgets. In a civilization search for the truth, you got to make a lot of stuff. So we got stuff to carry people really far, really fast. We got stuff so that people can communicate with uh, others around the world. We got uh, stuff that's devoted to medical needs. And uh, where's it gotten us? Okay. Now, today, people who have nowhere to go can get there really fast. Who cares? People that used to talk to their neighbors can now talk to people who are not their neighbors, which means they ain't got time to talk to their neighbors. That's science. That's technology. Uh, medical technology. We have MRIs, CAT scans, and ultrasounds. Something we ain't never had before. So now, instead of people dying of uh, rheumatiz and uh, black death and... Uh, consumption at, at 76 years of age we now get to die of surgery at 76 years of age and please don't write to me that we have made great medical advances and now the life expectancy is 50 years longer than it used to be because that is all bull period and you can do some research on your own i don't just throw garbage out there and uh expect you to believe me just Look up anybody. Look up, uh, I mean, you go, you got the internet. So type in George Washington, uh, Patrick Henry, uh, uh, Patrick Jones, uh, Lizzie Borden, uh, anybody, just anybody from history, and look at what day they were born and what day they died. Did everybody back then die at 30 and everybody today dies at 100? 4,000 years ago, it was recorded in the Bible, and let's see if I can paraphrase. It says something like, what is man who is here today and gone tomorrow? Maybe he will live 60 years. If he is of exceptional continence, 70 or 80 years. Has that changed? Why would somebody write that 4,000 years ago if it wasn't true? I mean, even if you found that on a tablet in Babylon by somebody you don't know, why would they write that unless human beings basically live the same amount of time they always live? So anyways, that's my thoughts on what people consider science as opposed to what really is science. Now, we're going to 
Okay, the other day I made a Bible video where I told you you could understand the Bible for yourself and you could unlock sacred secrets on your own. Sacred secrets that nobody else knows, hasn't known for 2,000 years. We're going to do that right now. I promised you I would step you through, you know, one step at a time and let you figure it out for yourself. This is a different one. This is just something that came up today. In the Bible, uh, it says on the first day God created this, on the second day God created that, on the third day God created something else. And people who believe in the Bible believe in evolution. They say God used evolution to make all the things that are alive on the earth. Well, if that's true, then God lied when he made the Bible. Because it says on the first day he created this thing, on the second day he created that thing, third day. He didn't say on the first day he created this, on the second day he wiped out everything he created on the first day and created all new stuff. On the third day he wiped out all the stuff from the day before and created all new stuff. On the fifth day he wiped out everything that was made on the fourth day and created all new stuff. He made everything, and when he got to the end, when he finally put people here, he said he looked around and saw that everything was very good. At that point, every living creature on the earth was here. Everything from uh, baboons to hippopotamus to people to dinosaurs. There's no reason to believe that anything was gone when man got here. Uh, and don't talk about, oh, if we had dinosaurs, all the people would get killed. Look, we got bears. Do all the people get killed? Can a bear kill people? All right, let's see. Let's step into another, another part of the discussion. This is the Bible part. On the first day is not what's in the Bible because the Bible was in Hebrew, ancient Hebrew. It says on the first yom, Y-O-W-M. That's an ancient Hebrew word. Yom means day. Day can mean 24-hour period. Day can also mean a period of unspecified length. Now, if you're telling me that that word yom is never used for a period of unspecified length, we're going to go about one or two paragraphs forward in the Bible and uh, talk about another scripture. In this scripture, God is talking to Adam, and he says, From every tree that is in, in the garden you may eat. However, from the tree that is in the middle of the garden you must not eat, for if you eat it, you shall die on that very day. Yom, Y-O-W-M, not day, Yom. Same as however many days it took to create the earth, Yom. So anyway, it's, we're not real clear of exactly how all this went down, but we do know that Adam did eat the fruit. And he was condemned to death, he did die. But he didn't die that 24 hour period. I don't care what you think. He died hundreds of years later. And the proof is in this. Later in the Bible, it says that the reason we die is because we came from Adam's loins. So, you know what? Maybe you could pause the, your, your computer right now and think about this for a second, and you may figure it out on your own. When Adam was condemned, the entire human family was still inside of him, in his DNA, his genetics. The Bible says that he had two kids named Cain and Abel. Where were they born? Couldn't have been born inside the Garden of Eden because they would have been condemned for no reason. It also says that Adam lived for 900 and something years and had kids for the whole time. He might have had a couple of hundred kids. And every single one of them was still in him when he was condemned to death. So did Adam die during that 24-hour period? Couldn't happen. There you go. You just unraveled a 2,000-year-old mystery. Nobody knew it since Jesus. Uh, I mean, there are people that argue that, you know, the Bible says a day is like a 1,000 years with God, and uh, they recognize that it could be any specific, you know, any kind of amount of time. It's, humans are not meant to even care how long it took. You know, I mean, here I am, I'll worship God because he's greater than me. So, if I got a God that can make universes in six days, wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm going to worship, I'm going to worship him. But if I got a God that takes 350 billion years to create universes, that's still better than I could do. If you don't want to survive, don't listen to me.